Fight back! No. He belongs to the Dark Lord. Hi guys, this is Martin over at CBR and be sure to stick around because today I'm taking a deep dive into Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Yes, that's right, it's time to talk about Rooms of Requirement, Vanishing Cabinets, Potion Masters and the evolution of Draco Malfoy. With David Yates back in the directing chair and Steve Cloves back on screenwriting duties for Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, what audiences get this time round is a real exploration of the evolution of evil in terms of the Death Eaters and how this organisation all slots together. How this cult or Voldemort ultimately comes to rule over Hogwarts and end in such a dramatic fashion with Dumbledore being pitched off the astronomy tower. So much so that when it comes to Draco and his evolution, you also get introduced to Narcissa, his mother with Lucius now locked up in Azkaban. There are so many elements, so many threads which come together in this particular film and the tone is so inherently dark that it, it, to all intents and purposes, Harry Potter is involved. But for the first time, he gets to take a backward step as other, other elements come forward and take the bull by the horns. But what exactly are they? So the first and most crucial puzzle piece in Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince is the arrival of Horace Slughorn, played by Jim Broadbent. He is a celebrity obsessed and vainglorious professor of potions who was brought on by Dumbledore for nefarious reasons, for not only what he knows, but what he knows. Anyone who's seen the film will get the point. He is a crucial link between Harry Potter and Tom Riddle in the past and he is concealing a memory which ultimately reveals one of the, shall we say, final elements which really brings Harry Potter as a franchise together. That is the revelation of the Horcrux. It is uh, also this, uh, with the involvement of Horace Slughorn and Narcissa played by Helen McQuarrie who interestingly is was the wife of Damien Lewis from Homeland for fa for fact fans. It also, as I said, it, it, it brings into question and sort of uh, opens up the discussion around Voldemort and exactly what he is prepared to do to survive because Horcruxes are horrible things. But what else is there about this film which is going to get people excited should they wish to dive back in? For my money, there are so many elements in Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince which really raise the bar in terms of the franchise as a whole that it's almost most impossible to pick a favourite one. Whether it's the performance from Jim Broadbent as Horace um, Slughorn or the arrival of Narcissa and the, uh, the connection slash conversations however minor between herself and Bellatrix and Severus in those opening minutes of the film or whether it's the set piece of visual effects that phenomenon which essentially has all of these zombies slash dead bodies slash apparitions crawling out of the lake when there's just Harry and Dumbledore and there's this huge wreath of fire and it really is an, a visual spectacular if you will or is it and I think this is important the evolution of Draco Malfoy and the first time that Tom Felton gets to step out from the shadows and show exactly what he is capable of doing not only with the character but as an actor as a whole within the franchise this really this film does belong to him as well as the masterful Alan Rickman if anything that is a takeaway from Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince go to it for Harry Potter sure see Radcliffe in all his finery but stick around for Severus Snape and the mastery of Rickman but also pay attention to Tom Felton because in this film he really is excellent. My name's Martin, this has been CBR, we'll talk soon.